What's up guys, XM360 here, and in this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Jet Lasers PLE Pro 473 nanometer, 100 milliwatt blue laser. So this retails on their site for $400, and it comes in different power levels too for different prices, but the model I have here is their highest power model for the 473s, it's the 100 milliwatt. So this is a very high power rating for 473 DPSS. I haven't had anything even close to this. The highest 473s I've had have been like all below 25 milliwatts. So this is going to be pretty cool to test out. I might even be able to do some burning with this, which would be awesome. Now, while I'm opening this up here, I do have to give one quick disclaimer. I'm not getting this in brand new condition. It's in pretty much like new condition with all the original accessories. Um, because I did acquire it through a trade with another Laser Pointer Forums member, so this is not brand spanking new, but he kept it in pretty darn good condition. Um, little code switch uh, instructions here. I got the manual switch. I don't have a code switch, so it's just a simple on-off button, and then there's a hold down button as well. And this right here is just a quick look at the specs. I'm not going to go into too much detail on those, but for anybody who was curious, here they are. Um, like I said, this is rated at 100 milliwatts, uh, but we're going to see when we do the LPM test on my Laser BA LPM what the true power is. Um, so looking at some of the accessories in here, these are the accessories that did come with it, including this little lanyard. And by the way, Jet Lasers does operate out of China, so you will probably see some higher shipping uh, costs and some longer shipping times if you are not located in China, if you're having it shipped internationally. The host itself has a solid metal construction. I believe it's aluminum if I had to guess. I looked on the website but I couldn't exactly find it listed what the type of metal is. Um, but if I had to guess it's most likely aluminum. And the laser's a lot bigger than you might realize. It's 275 millimeters long or roughly 11 inches in length. So that's definitely something to take into account. It's a pretty big laser. And I'm not knocking them or anything. I know these high-powered DPSSs have a lot of uh, a lot of internal workings that are not compact in any way, so you can't really expect this to be a small unit. Uh, but I just want you guys to realize that this is a large host. The unit I have here is mechanical switch, not code switch. So this is the simpler one. That big button is press on, press off, and the smaller one above it is hold down for on, let go for off. On the other side we have threads for a tripod, we have an inlet for a power supply wired, and then we have the option for a safety pin, but the default option if you don't select it is no safety pin enabled, so this little silver safety pin docket right here is basically just nothing. Um, the very top of the laser where you see all these little lines, that's your adjustable focus feature. And on the very top of the laser, there's threads for attachments, and it also comes with like a little lens protecting attachment that you can screw on when the laser's not in use. And I think this is just great because I've always wanted something like this, and I've always seen this with other lasers, but none of the lasers I've ever owned have had a little um, like little lens protector that I can screw into the top when I'm not using it. So I think that's pretty cool. And then towards the very bottom of the laser where your tail cap is located, you'll see the little switch where you can insert that key to lock or unlock the laser. And on that tail cap, there is also little holes where you can attach that lanyard. You can unscrew the tail cap to insert the battery this way, and the laser also unscrews at the halfway point. Um, you could insert the battery there as well, but it's easier to unscrew with the tail cap because uh, those threads are a lot shorter and it's a lot faster to unscrew it there. Uh, the battery goes in negative side towards the uh, lens of the laser, positive end towards the tail cap, which is actually pictured on the side of the laser, so that's pretty nice. It tells you right on the side of the laser uh, which end is the positive and the negative. This thing runs on one lithium-ion battery 26650, a uh, bit bigger than the 18650s, but uh, it runs on one single one. And once you have that key switched to the unlock position and your battery is in there, you'll see the LED indicator lights will be red. And then when the laser is on, they turn green. And you can see that uh, that little 473 nanometer blue dot right there. It's a light blue. It's closer to green than the normal 445 nanometer, but there isn't really any green in this color. It's more of like a sky blue. And it's probably my favorite wavelength right behind 589 nanometers, which is yellow. 
Um, this is a very, very nice color in my opinion. Uh, if you've used a lot of the normal 445 blues, this is a very pleasant uh, change of wavelength. So I'm now going to move on to showing you guys what it looks like in different lighting levels. And as I say in all my laser videos, make sure you're wearing laser safety glasses whenever operating a laser. Um, so this is a somewhat dim indoor setting here. And you can see that dot very bright. The beam itself isn't really all that visible um, in this lighting level. If I move to an area that's a bit more dark, I can see the beam looking down the axis of the laser and I can't really see it looking at it from the side. Moving to a daytime outdoor setting, there's no beam visibility obviously, but that dot is still very visible even from several hundred feet away. And one thing that's very, very nice, as you can tell from looking at it on that rock wall in the distance, is that the divergence on this one, as with most DPSSs, holds very, very tight and very narrow even at great distance. So moving on to a nighttime setting now, you get some beam visibility from the side, good beam visibility looking down the axis of the laser and that dot is very bright. Obviously you gotta be extremely careful, especially at night because your laser is more visible to everybody else and you can get yourself in a lot more trouble. So always act safely and responsibly with lasers. Um, I'm now gonna move on to some LPM testing. Now, just before I start doing this, I want to let you know, as far as duty cycle and runtime goes, going off of what's on the Jet Lasers website, they have their official LPM test where they run this thing for 18 minutes straight and they reach a maximum power of, I believe it was 232 milliwatts. That was somewhere after 10 or 11 minutes, I think. And the reason I bring this up is because I'm using that information when I'm doing my testing so you guys don't think I'm just running this thing for crazy long here because I am going to run a test. I think my longest test out of the three tests I did here was 16 minutes. Um, but I just wanted to let you know that's why I'm running it for so long because I'm going off of their tests and how long they ran the laser for. That's going to be 16 minutes constantly on on the LPM using a timer or two to keep track of how long I've been running the laser. And with this being a DPSS, it's going to have some warm-up time, and it's not going to be full power right away. So I'm not going to obviously make you watch the whole test. Um, I did have some camera issues when I did these, so unfortunately I didn't get the video from the first test. First test I did ran for about 12 minutes. That was from a cold start, and I achieved a maximum power of 197 milliwatts um, before I began to drop off after the laser decided it was too hot and the power was decreasing. Um, the test 2 also had a camera issue where I ran out of memory while I was doing the test but I reached a maximum power on test 2 of 225 milliwatts. That test was also going from a cold start and that was after the full 16 minutes and after I reached that peak of 225 I then began my drop off and I shut off the laser. And then test three was immediately following test two after a cool down time. So test three was not from a cold start. It was already somewhat warmed up. And because of this, I've reached my maximum a lot faster. And that was a maximum of 215 milliwatts after five minutes of use, as opposed to the 16 minutes on that first test, or should I say the second test. And with all of my findings, I did a couple of other LPM tests that I didn't record, but all of my findings were right on par with what the website, Jet Lasers website, had for their LPM test. Going from cold starts, I reached my maximum power after about 10 to 11 minutes. So that was the warm up time. And my maximum power was right on par with their 232. I managed to get 225 milliwatts out of this thing with my Laser BA LPM. And on average, all my tests after being adequately warmed up would average at the 200 milliwatt mark. So this thing is crazy over spec. It's double spec. Now, they're probably maybe giving us the reading of 100 milliwatts for the specification based on a one minute LPM test. But when you run this thing at these longer times, you get double spec, which is insane. And it's really nice. I wouldn't really suggest running it anything past the 18 minutes that they run it for. I don't even really like running it for the 15 or 16 minute tests. I typically don't ever run this thing for longer than 10 minutes constantly on like that, but 
I did it for this video and I probably won't do it again just because I don't like warming up the laser that much. And it wasn't like hot to the touch or anything, but I know the internals are a lot hotter than you can feel on the outside. And now moving on to the part of this video that I was looking forward to the most, the burn test. It's not very often at all that you're able to do a burn test with a DPSS 473. This wavelength at this current time, the technology is just not there for many hobbyists to get their hands on a powerful 473. But this one is strong enough to do a good burn test as you can see it lighting up these matches pretty much instantly. Now this is after I used my LPM to meter this thing and warm it up to about 150 milliwatts. Then I started the burn test. And it was still climbing when I started the burn test, so this burn test might be sitting at closer to the 200 milliwatt mark. And the beam is also enhanced by a fog machine inside this closed room. I am using my laser safety glasses as well, and there is a sink full of water under my burn test. And I use that adjustable focus to set my focal point to probably close to a foot, maybe a little bit less um, from the tip of the laser. And yeah, just makes very, very quick work of these matches. I'm now going to move on to some black electric tape. And you guys are going to see here right away, you see the smoke coming off the electric tape. It's cutting it. I have to go up and down a couple of times, but within seconds, I'm able to cut clean through the black electric tape. Next up is going to be a black balloon. And the laser pretty much makes instant work of that, popping it right away. And next up is going to be a dry leaf. And I probably will fast forward this a bit for you guys. I'm able to make a lot of um, a lot of burn marks and a lot of like little red embers. If I kept this going for a while, I might be able to get a flame here if I kind of blew on the embers a bit. But it is able to burn this uh, this dry leaf very well. Last up is a piece of wood. Now I'm not able to light this on fire, but you can see the little smoke coming off it. I'm able to make little black burn marks on the wood, little etchings. Um, and I could probably like spell out a name or something if I spent enough time on this. So I'm going to use this to now transition into the reviewing aspect and my summary on this laser. Starting with the price point of $400 plus shipping. I thought it was okay and mostly just because you don't really have many or any that I know of personally. Um, competitors in the market for such a high powered 473 of 200 milliwatts I'm sh in a handheld version too not in a module I'm sure they're out there I'm sure there is at least one competing laser but I don't know of it so that's why I'm saying the price point is fair just because there's nothing to really compare it to I thought the beam was perfect it was extremely narrow and fine and it was aligned perfectly with the host of the laser there was zero crookedness whatsoever uh, the color is, as always with 473s, amazing. If you ever get the chance to compare it to a 445 in a fog room, definitely take the opportunity. I did a video on this, which you can find in the video description, and it's a really nice comparison. Um, the host, while it is big, I still found it very nice with all the uh, safety features and all the different, um, different little extra features that you don't commonly see in lasers. I thought the host was very, very nice and... If I really had to compare it to every other host I've had, I think it might be the best host I've had just because of all of those little extra features they add in. I thought the adjustable focus worked great. One thing to note about this adjustable focus on this particular laser though is it doesn't make a huge focus like with some other lasers where you can turn the adjustable focus to the point where your beam will basically turn into like a flashlight because it's so wide. With this adjustable focus, the range of focusing is a lot more narrow, so if I unfocus this laser as much as possible, my dot will still only be about the size of a quarter. Um, that's not a con, that's just something I thought was necessary to point out. Now this thing does eat through 26650s just doing my LPM tests alone, and I know those are very long LPM tests that end up taking like half an hour but just in that time I ate through more than half of a 26650 battery capacity um, so these things do kind of eat the lithium-ion batteries but the duty cycle on this thing was very nice running it at those extremely long times that I did uh, 15 minutes plus I didn't see any damage um, the laser itself was warm but it wasn't hot to the touch um, and like I said Jet lasers themselves did the LPM tests at 18 minutes, so 
Yeah, I thought the duty cycle on this thing was very nice. Although, in the future, I'm definitely going to just keep it under 10 minutes because I don't really see a need to push it past 10 minutes because 10 minutes is adequate to get it warmed up to max power. And my biggest pro and the biggest selling point on this laser is the spec. This thing is double spec. It's over double spec. This thing clocked in for me at 225 milliwatts, and this thing's only rated for 100 milliwatts. And for a 473 nanometer, that's awesome. I really loved it. I was extremely pleased with the power output on this one and the burning capability. And yeah, I love this laser a lot. Um, although it's expensive and the host is somewhat big, I think it's totally worth it and I think it's really nice. And if you don't need that much power, you can go with one of the lower power options for less money. And I mean, depending on the spec, if they all run over spec, you might be able to buy the 50 milliwatt version of this and get a 100 milliwatt 473 laser. Now, I'm not guaranteeing that. I'm just saying with what I have here, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. But yeah, that pretty much wraps up my thoughts on this laser. Down below in the video description, you'll find all the relevant links, where to buy this laser, where to get laser safety glasses, that wavelength comparison I was talking about, and anything else I might have mentioned in the video, you'll find those links down below. If you guys found this video helpful in any way at all, hit that like button down below. And if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button for lots of awesome laser videos just like this. And as always guys, thank you for watching from XM360.